Hello there and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5. We're doing something a little bit different today. We've got a custom race that I put together based on my desire to have a dirt track in this part of the world, essentially. Uh, around where the hotel and golf course is. I've called it Driver in the Rough, because I like my puns. It demands a retro hot hatch. For the car category. No rating restriction though, so you can soup it up as much as you like. I'm choosing to do it with a C class, because I just kind of like it. Um, some old VW Corrado that I've uh, got a bit of a soft spot for. It doesn't even have off road tyres on it at the moment, but it's doing alright. It's one of the earlier cars that I actually put together and like tuned up myself, did upgrades and stuff for when I started playing this game. And it's done me well for any of these sorts of things. Now some of these checkpoints, you may have noticed, are not placed in like great spots, or more to the point, they're placed in positions that allow you to cut the corners quite handily. My thinking was that this could be a good one that you could use to just race against some unbeatable driver tars and have a little bit of an advantage, just to level the playing field a little bit. What a thin checkpoint through that one there, going around here. So it starts off from one of the street race uh, starting positions, but you can then turn it into whatever race that you like once you actually put together the blueprint, which is quite nice. It's quite a long track, as you may have figured out by now. <laughs> Most of the circuits in the game seem to top out at about a minute and a half or so per lap, even with a lower rated vehicle. And obviously if you push that out longer, then a lower rated car will take proportionally longer to get through. But I'm kind of fine with that. I quite enjoy having a little bit of a longer track because otherwise it, it feels like you're over and done with things far too quickly and rather than just split this up into multiple tracks that would cover off these sorts of roads I'm intentionally cutting the corner blatantly there <laughs> again just a way to get a little bit more ahead zigzag across the riverbed here this is uh, set like forced into the dry season so the river is not a problem and another tight turn here I was tempted when I was putting this together to actually go straight through there and there's another network of dirt roads that join up with this one further along there will be a T intersection that we go straight through just further along here but that was a bit too far at that point. <laughs> that was going to make it, yeah, a very long race. I think there just needs to be a few more in between, because between the sh normal short circuit races and, like, the Goliath or Gauntlet, you know, the, the top of the line races for each of the categories, is just a huge difference between the two. Now, even if you consider doing three laps of a normal circuit, that compared with doing just one lap of the gauntlet is just, yeah, well it's not even a lap, but it's a, a point to point. I'm not quite sure how it works with blueprints once they've been put together, whether or not other people are able to make other events based on the route that I put together. I kind of hope so, but either way. I'll be having the share code for the track uh, in the of the event in the description, so you can have a little bit of a go yourself if you so desire. If this sort of thing takes your fancy, manage to get the checkpoints uh, fairly clean. It doesn't get super confused like some of the event lab ones seem to do. <laughs> Sometimes the map will show just a big gap between the final checkpoint and the finishing line, and I've never quite understood why. So we're into the second lap now, just over the five minute mark, so we should be back by nine minutes or so. 
I think that's reasonable, personally. I was thinking of making it the three laps that you normally have for circuits, but nah, I think that stretches out a little too far at that point. Once again, just cutting the corner. I also refrained from putting in like lots of obstacles or just trash along the side. There's not really any need for any barriers or direction indicators or anything like that. Could have put in some grandstands or something, but you only seem to be able to place empty ones anyway, so what's the point? <laughs> Maybe I should have done what other people do and just put random dinosaurs around the place, but... That's too distracting. This is all about having a nice country drive. I'm fairly sure you can do a, uh, like, PvP or co-op race using these blueprints as well. Uh, from the event lab. So I'd like to think this is a pretty nice track to have a bit of a race with your friends. They'll be more competitive than the AI, that's for sure. I did think that I was putting together a track that should be reasonably challenging still, but that wasn't complicated. The AI should manage, like, you are staying on established roads the whole way. This is not a cross-country race or anything like that. I am surprised the that far behind <laughs> but on higher difficulties maybe they'll be a bit more competitive I can hope it also might be just a case of when it's a custom track and obviously no one or very few people have played it there's not really much driver data to pull from so it has to just revert to probably some basic defaults of driver behavior and they just don't manage very well. As I, from what little I understand of how the driver tar behavior is meant to work, I believe they're meant to be based on actual player behavior. Not quite sure how much truth there is to that, but if that's the case, then you'd need more people to actually play it in order to build up a more competitive data set. So hey, if you like it, share it. <laughs> just kind of reminds me of when I, I mean, even in this game, just go around just exploring early on before I had unlocked everything and had fast travel for free. <laughs> but also harks back to like Test Drive Unlimited days driving around on some of the new surfaces having a bit of fun. It'd be really nice if that franchise had done something. The new one's not that great from what I can tell. All that aside, here we are up to the line. Let's just get a skill board. There you go. You could probably uh, have a bit of fun, rack up some skill points and across the line. See how profitable it was. 13,000 XP, that's not bad. And we get a wheel spin from leveling up. And now time for some bonus content. See, you can make these races however you like. Once you've got the route established, you can put together multiple races using the same template and configure them however you like. So when I was racing across the river in the dry track going, ah, this is a riverbed normally. What would it be like with water in it? I had to find out. <laughs> so from one extreme to the other, we've gone from a B-class VW Retro Hot Hatch to an S1-class off-road Ford Bronco that's just been kitted out, basically for the Dakar Rally or something. This will be a lot faster, it will be a lot more sideways, we will rack up a lot of skill points in the meantime. I'm kind of curious how long I can keep the combo going, to be honest. Eventually I'll just have a, a long enough straight that it'll wear out, probably. We 
we made sure that it's uh, heavy rainfall. I didn't do tropical storm like I did for my thunder gauntlet. But it's the next best thing. <laughs> we might actually be a little bit more competitive with the AI this time because uh, I'm going to be drifting around all of the corners. <laughs> and they might actually catch up. We'll see. I'm not optimistic. They still seem to get a little bit confused by some of the road layout. Oof, but if I'm not careful, I'm going to be missing lots of checkpoints as I slide about. But it does definitely put a different personality onto the track. Unfortunately, the river didn't end up as full as I thought it was going to. You can see down here, there is some water in it. But it's not exactly tempestuous and I tried putting it on the storm season instead this is wet storm is actually not even as much strangely you'd think that you'd get like flash flooding and the river would be much higher in storm conditions but nope wet season is where it's at this water trap's got a little bit more in it Weirdly, the farms all still look dry. I guess maybe in the wet season they haven't been replanted yet? I'm not sure. This would be another fun one to do with like no driver aids and everything, like I did with the, the Thunder Gauntlet in the V-Dub van. Just turn off everything and slide about all over the show. But you do actually have other people in this one. That was a solo race. More like a time trial, like rally styles. This is not. <laughs> so be warned. The other good thing about a longer circuit, as shown by the 13,000 or so experience that I got from the previous race, and about 20,000 credits, I think it was, the longer the track, the more rewards you get. Instead of having to just go out and go through all of the menus to join another race, just rack up your rewards in one. Get a lot of skill points, get a lot of experience, get a lot of credits. Job done. And that's where having the AI being a little bit... Um, less than competitive you could say it is quite handy because then you can ramp up the difficulty which gives you a credit bonus and by being more likely to place first then that's what gives you the highest experience rewards as well I was very tempted when marking out the route to just skip some checkpoints so that you could basically just drive straight through back there on the main road and cuts directly to this section just to make it really easy but that's a little bit on the nose and kind of unnecessary in this particular case that is a fun way to get easy wins oh, we completely messed up that section Try not to hit the rocks through here, because it'll kill your combo, of course. So our lap times with the Corrado were about four and a half minutes. We finished at eight minutes fifty. Our first lap was 3.45. This should come in a little bit under that, I think, unless I make some hideous mistakes between now and the end always possible so it should be around seven minutes i think honestly a like a two minute difference across that length of track is not as bad as it could be or not as stark as it could be when you're considering a b rating b c rating i think even versus an s1 but because it's quite twisty there isn't all that much opportunity to really make the speed worth it. <laughs> we can't go nice and wide on this corner here. 
to get a nicer entry into that corner there. And just break some stuff on the way to the finish line. There we go. Two tracks in one. If you've liked what you've seen and are interested in trying these tracks out for yourself, of course you can search for them just using the share code in the description, or just come down to Castillo del Mar down here, this is the starting point for it, and then you can search for blueprints that start from this particular location. I have been working on some other fun custom tracks and have some ideas for a few more, so I hope to do a few more videos like this rather than just doing the playlist content, so look out for those. But that's all for now, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time.